theories spreading all across Fintweet, YouTube, and all the financial groups. B why? Clickbait. Hey there, Tommy from FibonaciTraders.com here with the daily market recap. Like, subscribe, and let's see the charts. As usual, we'll go over the SPY, the QQQ, the Dow Jones, the IWM, the SOXX, Magnificent 7, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA, Netflix, and many more names, and selected ETFs. So don't go anywhere, don't fast forward, just sit back, relax, and let's see where market is taking us next. SPY ended up the day, 0.2 to the downside, and as you can see, during Tuesday, market broke this structure, and Wednesday, market tried to get back inside, but got rejected by the structure. We ended up the day with a doji. We ended up the day with making slightly lower lows. Now, all this area, the 5, 8, 5, 549 area, all this area, the low of August 15 is the support breaking below and we are heading towards the, the 545 area to close the gap and we want this gap to get filled because first we know that more than 85-90% of all gaps will get filled throughout time. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So we want especially downside gaps. If we are bulls, we want those gaps to get filled as soon as possible. Why? Because we also know that once gaps are getting filled 90% of the time, we get a trend reversal. So if we will close this gap and even this gap, I prefer also to closing this gap, we might get touch and we will find a support at the 531 area, 530 area, the lower border of this yellow zone. And then we will get the trend reversal that we all want going into Q4 of 2024, be prepared for more volatile days during September, be prepared for at least another two or three days like September 3rd. RSP, the equal weight ETF, still holding very strong at the 173 area, still trying to get attached and trying to stay very close to this uptrend line. Why? Because this trend line takes price to the upside. 176 is the resistance. 173 is the support. Breaking below and we are heading south to the 170.55 and then to this gap at the 168 area. QQQ ended up the day with 0.26 to the downside. Broke below the upper border of the yellow zone, the 460 one area 462 try to break above and stay above but failed doji we might get some kind of a bounce back not before this gap will get filled and we want this gap to get filled and not surprisingly this gap sits on the 50 percent fibonacci retracement we had an uptrend got rejected by this trend line now we're heading south to the 50 percent retracement which is also an open gap Failing to hold it, we will see the four, the 447.23 area that is the next support. Dow Jones ended up the day on the green, slight green on the Dow Jones, ended up the day with the doji inside candle, which means very good news for the Dow Jones because after this pullback on Tuesday, today, Wednesday, September 4th, Bears did not manage for a follow-through downside day. Bulls are had, uh, holding strong at the 410 area, very important area of support. Look left, trade right. It was a very important area of resistance. Resistance now, since August 23rd, it's a very, very important area of support. Breaking below it, and we are heading south to the 404.50 and to this gap at the 400. IWM ended up the day also with a doji sitting on this 50% retracement area. It's all about Fibonacci. If you're looking for that one tool, that one indicator that 
price follows it's not these indicators price doesn't follow emas price doesn't follow rsis or mcd's they follow price they are lagging indicators but there is one tool that price follows and it is fibonacci you know all these fibonacci levels which in this case the fti gives us as automatically and you know it just look back in the past few um daily stock market and you will see none changed price follows fibonacci now at the iwm we are in a doji of the 50 percent retracement can we get some kind of a pullback not pullback but bounce back to the 216 the upper border of the low zone not before this gap at the 209 will get filled soxx closed the day with on the green side but ended up below the lower border of the yellow zone we are still bearish on three out of four time frames we are still below this trend line so no the dip of the soxx is still not here we might get some kind of a bounce back to the 225 area to the upper border of the yellow zone together with its downtrend line but as long as we are below this downtrend line for now there is no trend reversal there is no uh, risk on for the soxx magnificent seven looks exactly the same as the soxx and as we said we were prepared for this gap at the 4280 area to get filled and here we are this gap just got filled not surprising as we always say gaps 85 90 percent of them will get filled it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when yes i know i sound like a broken record but that's it this is technical analysis you have your rules you know price action you know how to read price action rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat like a broken record that's it now magnificent seven holding the 50 percent retracement now can we get the um, trend reversal but we need to take under consideration for now in my opinion until we will get at least a weekly close above this yellow trend line no risk on and the magnificent seven natural gas ended up the day for now it's on the zero we've been waiting for this double bottom scenario to get validated and as you can see last trading uh, candle got rejected by the upper border of the yellow zone now looks like it's stuck breaking down and under 195 and back to the 185 accelerate the real estate etf very nice uptrend strength on this etf 43.30 is the support now we have a doji of a trend line last time we had this doji of this trend line it was here we got a pullback all the way to the red line also here back in may two three consecutive dojis of a trend line we got rejected and broke the down the the red line will it happen once again over here we need to be prepared always for the worst case scenario as traders our only job is to manage risk aka always be prepared for the worst case scenario as long as 4333 is holding support we're good to go long breaking below and we might consider and ending this um, long position for now xlf two consecutive dojis we are still inside an option channel as long as this option channel is holding we are good to go long holding long the xlf if you're looking to enter if you're looking for a nice um, entry point above the 46 might be a very nice entry point and the xlf look at the xlu also uptrend until proven otherwise 76 area is the support we are still inside an uptrend channel bullish on all time frames 
Doji off a trend line, Doji off a Fibonacci resistance, some kind of a pullback might incoming. But as long as we are above the 75, 70 area, as long as we are above and holding above this trend line, the lower border of this uptrend channel, we are good to go long on the XLU. Now, like, subscribe, and let's talk Apple. Apple ended up the day 0.86% to the downside. But look at this. Doji, we said Apple needs to hold the upper border of the yellow zone, needs to hold this lower border of this broadening formation. And what did we get? We get support. Doji, this doji of a very important area of support might signal a trend reversal back to the upside first. Let's see 225 breaking up. I want to see a weekly close above the 225 and then we can say that Apple is on its way back up. Microsoft ended up the day with 0.13, still holding, barely, but still holding, as you can see, holding the uh, lower border of the yellow zone, uh, the lower border of the broadening formation, but we are below the lower border of the yellow zone. Bearish on all time frames on Microsoft, as long as Microsoft continues to slide down on this lower border of the broadening formation, the way is down, 399, 385 are next supports. NVIDIA, did NVIDIA get subpoena or not? What's going on with Bloomberg? Manip market manipulation by Bloomberg? No one knows. The only thing, as always, risk management. Risk management and learn how to read price section candlestick analysis red line holding support for the higher lows look at this always if you want to learn how to draw almost perfect trend lines don't draw them on candles draw them on line chart lows to low highs to highs look at this the low of the day ended up on this trend line now we've got ourselves a very nice doji with a very very long week to the upside once we see these kind of weeks we need to treat them as gaps so we might get a trend reversal to the upside feeling this week and then back retesting the upper border of the low zone, the 116 area, but is this the, the deep of NVIDIA? Another day or two will suggest if this is the deep or not. Last time, the trend line held, as you can see here, trend line held, and then we saw higher lows, higher highs. This was the deep. Is the deep now? Not yet. We need higher low and at least another higher high. Google 0.6% to the downside. Google looks like it wants to retest the 154, 155 area, but we got ourselves a doji, a very nice doji after this downtrend. Some kind of a, a trend reversal might happen in the next two, uh, one or two trading days left for this week, but still we're bearish on all time frames. Amazon back below the lower border of the yellow zone below this trend line market for now bears are in control also on amazon 171 is the support below it 166 no long for now on amazon meta close the day green 0.19 percent holding very very nice on the upper border of the yellow zone let's see can Meta close the week above the 523 area? And then we will start considering re-entering long on Meta. Until then, mixed signal from the FTI, which means no long and no short. Tesla, 4.2% to the upside. Tesla broke this downtrend red line. Now it entered 
the uptrend, the yellow uptrend, bullish on all time frames on Tesla. Now, as long as Tesla is holding above the lower border of the yellow uptrend, and also in my opinion, and not only my opinion, the FTI gives us where to put the stop loss. 206, you see? The FTI, one click away, gives you everything that you need. Also, where to put the stop loss. Of course, you need to do your own due diligence, but it's the ultimate tool you need on your chart because with this tool, you will make better, smarter decisions. Where to enter, where to put your stop loss, where to start exiting, where to add to an already winning position. So, let's see, as long as Tesla is above this yellow trend line we are good to go long on tesla next resistance 228 weekly close above the 228 maybe not this week maybe next week closing another monday or tuesday above the 229 area we are heading north to the upper border of this yellow trend uh, uptrend channel and closing the gap at the two 45 AMD 2.87% to the upside, holding the lower border of the yellow zone, inside candle, inside doji, go back to yesterday's market recap, and I said I'm expecting a doji, an inside candle after this drop to see that the lower border of this yellow zone is holding, and here we are, we got ourselves an inside candle, look how the FTI gives us resistance and support let's see trend reversal the 147 148 area is the, is will be a very tough resistance only a break above it i will start reconsidering entering long on amd netflix 0.65 percent to the upside close below the 685 area from support now resistance inside the candle we might get retesting the 663 area together with this lower trend line we have here a massive broadening formation inside a broadening formation it's all about broadening formations and trend lines palantir is this the time to enter palantir in my opinion no look where i got my alert to re-enter long and palantir for now if the downtrend continues so of course this alert will go down with with it but for now in my opinion only above 3160 we still have lower highs lower lows on each and every candle that goes by and you can also take trend lines lower lows lower highs downtrend and for now short-term downtrend until proven otherwise avgo with earnings coming up Thursday after the closing bell today Wednesday held nicely on the 50% retracement I will not touch it only I will reassess only Monday Eli Lilly 1% to the downside another day another doji Eli Lilly in the past two trading weeks nothing goes on Eli Lilly what we can do is we have here this structure you know this structure from the spy you know this structure this box the sideways move it will give up just a question if it will give up to the downside if bulls will give up first this gap will get filled and then we are heading south to the 886 breaking above the structure above the 973 area we are heading north 1033 and 1111 micro strategy ended up the day with two percent to the upside holding nice above the 11940 area the fibonacci support look left support over here trend reversal is this the same price section we can expect for my micro strategy no one knows for now we are bearish on three out of four time frames for now the trend is south smci 4.14 percent to the downside continues to slide down 
until proven otherwise. Bearish on all time frames, 395 is the support. Below it, we are heading south to close the gap at the 334. Shopify 1.5% to the downside. Shopify closed the gap and continues south. Now the 70, 80 area from support to resistance with a doji. Downside continuation 66 will be next. Don't go anywhere. We have a ver some very nice setups to talk about in for the next few trading days. Only two trading days left. So let's talk about INSP. Close the day with 11.3% to the upside. Now let's see continuation above the 200 and we are heading north to close the gap at the 245. 170, 40 from a very tough resistance to a very important area of support. Bullish on all time frames. Keep checking INSP to break above the 200 and then 245 gap will get filled. CPNG, Kupang. Once again, towards the upper border of this broadening formation, held nice, the nice, 20, the 2174 from resistance to support. Now I'm looking for a break above this trend line. And once this break will happen, we are heading north to the 2751 bullish on all time frames and CPNG. MXL, Max Linear. Starting to curl up. I want to see another daily close. As you can see, I have my alert over here above the 14, above the 1540 area. And then next resistance is the 1680. Above it, we have the 1860, 2040, and closing this gap. Bullish on all time frames and MXL. MDB, MongoDB, holding nice the 276 area in the past. Three trading days. I want to see a break above the 2797. First, closing this gap. And then I want to see the 297 area holding support. And then I have my alert to go long on MongoDB towards 350 and 382. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like, subscribe, check the links in the description below. Until the next video, stay safe.